Hello and welcome to DW Kit. In this tutorial, we'll show you how to bind the form fields that we created in the previous video to the data model we created earlier. This process of binding form fields to data model attributes is called data mapping. As a result, we'll get a fully functional user interface that's tied to the database of our project. Here's a brief overview of what we'll be doing today. This is the user interface available at the link that ends with form slash documents, which you can see in the address bar here. Here is a list of all the documents displayed in grid form. It's already mapped, so we can see the individual names of each document. If we double click on any row, a document editing form will come up. When mapping is complete, all the changes you've made to the form will be saved in the database. Also, you can display data in certain data fields, for example, the current state of a document. Down below, you can see the document details, which is a separate grid attached to each document. There are two different data representation types, a main form and a collection. A collection is a set of data linked with the main form. In database terms, this link is called a one-to-many relationship. Now let's see how to map forms to data. First, let's map the form that we created in the previous video. You can start either in Manage Forms right after editing a form, or by opening Mapping Data Model. Let's go to Manage Forms. Open the document form that we created in our previous tutorial. Click Data Map at the top. It'll bring you to Mapping Data Model automatically. The data source type will be Entity, but you can also specify a URL if you're using an external data model. Open the Main Entity drop-down list and select Document. Expand the Main Entity list to see all the attributes, their names, and the empty control drop zones. All you need to do is drag and drop controls from the right column to the left one. Let's try Auto Mapping. It'll automatically match similar form control names with the attributes from the data model. If anything wasn't mapped, you can fix it manually. It seems that one of our controls on the right has a different name. It says comments instead of comment in the data model. So let's bring it over there. By the way, if you don't need to load some attributes from the server, you can uncheck the checkboxes next to the respective attributes. After mapping is done, click Save. If you want to unmap everything, click Reset Mapping at the top or move the selected controls back to the right column. OK, now that we've finished mapping the document form, we can test it out at the URL form slash document. Let's open it in another tab. It looks good, and you can see that it shows the default state automatically, which is draft. You might remember that we added it in the other tab for this input field. We can fill out this form and click Save, and it'll be saved in our project's database. You may have noticed that the primary key has now been added to the URL, and if you refresh the page, you will see the saved data. Now let's improve our document form by adding a details table to each document. To prepare, off-screen we've added a separate data model object called Document Details. Now go back to editing the document form. Throw in a header after the main form and name it Details. Add a new form container below. Insert a collection editor into this container. Name this collection editor Document Details without spaces. Add two columns, name and amount, with matching key and name, where key is the identifier used in code and name is the label that we'll see in our user interface. Set the control type to number for amount. All empty fields are text by default. Click Save and then save at the top to keep all the changes we've made to this form. Good, now let's map it to the data model.
Click Data Map at the top. Add a collection by clicking Create. Select Document Details from the list. Note that we've created this data model beforehand. Drag the document details from the right column to the Data Models drop zone in the middle. Here we also have Collection Filter and Filter Parameter where you can select a code action of the filter type. We'll get back to this topic in our next videos, but for now, let's leave it empty. If you want to load collection values into the form without saving them into the database, tick the Read Only checkbox. Expanded and match data model attribute names with key parameters from the collection editor. Select them in the alias dropdown. It's recommended that you assign them manually because if names are different, Auto binding won't work. Click Save. Let's test it out by switching to another tab where we have our document. Reload the page. Now you can see the details collection down below. Click Add a few times to attach a breakdown of the main amount used in the document. Click Save below. Refresh the page to check if the system saved the changes. Now let's add the main grid, which lists all the documents in our project. It'll have an infinite scroll with server paging. Let's open the Documents form, which shows a listing of all documents. It has a couple of buttons for adding and deleting rows, and a grid view element. Let's bring up its general parameters. The name is Documents Grid. The edit type is a form. The Edit Forms field should contain the form name, which will be opened when creating and editing grid items. The row key is ID. This is really important to set if you want to make changes to the document rows. The pagination type is set to Server, which means that as soon as we scroll down, the grid will send a request to the server and it'll add more rows. Down below, we can specify which document fields will be shown on the grid. Name, date, amount, and state. Now let's switch to the Events tab. Here it says that users can edit the document form by double-clicking on the row. Click Save to exit this window. Let's see what the buttons do, starting with Create. Open its properties and go to the Events tab. On click will run the grid create action, which will open the form specified as the documents grid edit form in the settings. In other words, this action will open a new document creation form. If we bring up the same tab for the delete button, it'll show the same target and scenario, but a different action. This will delete the selected grid records from the database. Okay, now let's map this grid to the data model. Go to data map at the top, Add a new collection for mapping. Select Document because it'll be a collection of documents. Drag the Documents Grid control to the drop zone next to the document collection. Expand the document attributes and select the respective aliases from the drop down list. We need to match the document's name, date, amount, and state. Click Save on the upper left. Now let's see how it works. Switch to another tab in the browser and type form slash documents. Here we can see the list of all documents created in the system. If we double click on any record, it'll bring up the form editing interface with the details. We can add, change, or delete data through the form and it'll be saved in the system. Today we've learned how to map forms to the data model to create fully functional interfaces. The next step will be learning how to bind forms to workflows. Thanks for watching. Give this video a like and subscribe to the OptimaJet channel to stay up to date with our latest tutorials.